That is W-Y-N, without you now, Sophia Golani. And uh, that is the newest single. And we're going to play something more of hers uh, in a little bit after we talk. But now hopefully she's with us. Uh, because sometimes when we Skype with people across the pond, it doesn't always go smoothly. <laughs> Sophia, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Oh, Hiya. Awesome, awesome. I got nervous. You said this was your first time using Skype, so uh, you are now uh, officially uh, initiated as a Skype user. By the way, so am I saying your name correctly? Uh, yes, you are, Sophia. Okay, wonderful. And it's Golani? Yep. Okay, just making sure. Very good. Yeah, I really like the track. It's catchy. And uh, we're also going to play uh, a little bit later after we talk for a little bit. We're going to play Levels, uh, which I believe was your previous single, which I, I also really, really love. So uh, great stuff. Um, whereabouts are you? Where are you from? Uh, right now, I'm in, well, I'm in Surrey uh, in England. So like the countryside bit of England. <laughs> yes. Very, yeah. very nice. Is, is that uh, is that where you're from originally? Uh, I was actually based in London originally, but now I'm in Surrey at the moment for the summer. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, why for the summer? Is it just better to get out of the city? I just love the countryside, man. I always, you know, like to think, I think it makes me think clearly when mm. I'm in the countryside and, you know, I get to see family and, you know, see all the pets that we have and stuff. It's nice, nice to reconvene after like being in the city for so long. Yeah, yeah. Does it does it help you creatively? Do you find yourself uh, writing more music when you're when you're there and able to kind of relax and get away from the city? Yeah, I think the hustle and bustle of the city is great, but also when you're like in that really calm mindset, like sitting in a field or just like, doing really simple activities like walking, mm -hmm. like for fun, it's like you know, oh, I can really take this time to myself and think about what I want to write about, what I want to produce. So it definitely does give me fresh perspectives and new messages that I can put in my songs. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand that. Even, you know, here in the United States, a lot of people will tell you like, you know, we're on less than an hour away from Boston. And I've had a lot of musicians from Boston or musicians I've talked to from New York city who, you know, they love being in the city and the energy of it and the, being around all these creative people and whatnot. But sometimes you just have to get out to kind of clear your head. And that's when some real creativity can, can sort of come in. Um, yeah, definitely. I think with the, with the city, it's, very diverse. There's so many different sounds. So the city is great for like that music community. But when you want to really kind of produce music and write and just kind of concentrate on yourself, I definitely think the, the countryside is the way to go. Yeah. Now is um, WYN, how long has that been out? That's relatively new, correct? Uh, probably like a, one or two months old. Oh, okay. Baby. Love my, love WYN. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Has that been played on American radio before now? Uh, not really, actually. I think this oh. is one of the first ones. So <laughs> thank you for supporting me. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. No, happy to do it. Um, now, do you have a full album out or are you just releasing singles at this point? Well, at the moment I am releasing singles, but I'm putting them all, all the singles that I've released and like a few extra ones into this project called yeah. Pieces of You. Um, it's you know it's such a cute little pro it's not an album i would say it's like a project of all the songs i've already done like just a recollection of my start to music and i've been doing a few hmv performances i've got a few coming up later this year in basingstoke brighton winchester it's gonna be cool and i've already done some uh just now in woking in guildford and in portsmouth which is really cool it's interesting um how you know we live in a time where people, musicians use a number of different approaches in terms of releasing music. And a lot of the people that I talk to now, you know, because I'm, I'm old enough to remember when it was a standard thing, you know, you, you put out an album and then release a series of singles. But now what a lot of musicians are doing, and it sounds like this is your approach is, is releasing a series of singles, which eventually become an album. So the, the process has become kind of inverted but I think the advantage to doing it that way, and, and I don't know if this is part of your strategy, but I, f I feel like the advantage of doing it that way is, you know, you're continuously giving your audience new music instead of making them have to wait and wait. And, you know, we do live in a uh, in, in a culture now with, with uh, technology, with the internet and social media and everything where you kind of have to feed that machine, right? You In, in order to, to maintain that engagement with your audience. Mm, I think you know, the music industry at the moment is very, very hustle and bustle. So when you do release those singles, it's always, you know, something new. I feel like an album for me right now, 
if I did it completely full of new music and just release an album, it's really, in my opinion, heavy unless it's got like some sort of storyline or mm-hmm. if I really feel like I need to like release a full album. But you know, it's very formal, and I think doing singles is fun. It's playful, and with the Digipack um, album and the record store performances, it's just a nice way of me being able to put out loads of music and stuff and still be able to constantly express myself but not have it in that so you know packaged album you know kind of way right right and also with releasing singles you know just one at a time you can really kind of give each single the the full attention that it Mm. deserves you know you can make a video you can make a lyric video you can make a you know a a full uh, produced fully produced video you can you know, you can do all kinds of things with it. You know, you can uh, use it uh, however you want to in terms of social media. Whereas when you put out an album, you can't really, you know, you'll release singles from an album, but you can't give every single track on that album the full attention from a marketing mm-hmm. standpoint, from a social media standpoint that it may deserve. So so I, I think it makes sense. Yeah, and it gives it a bit of breathing room as well. When I release a single, it's like, the only thing I talk about, the only thing I promote, like physical copies are important as it's all digital, but you know, with, with the digi pack and the tiny little project with all the singles in it. But mm-hmm. when I do release single after single, it's nice to be able to promote that one single on my social medias mm-hmm. and talk to people about it in interviews and, you know, just give it the room it deserves. So yeah, definitely agree. Uh, you, you, you referred to uh, physical media as well. So I'm curious here in the United States, um, physical media is still very much a thing. Vinyl uh, has really had a resurgence, especially over the past decade. Um, I think 2022 vinyl for the first time actually outsold CDs. But we have guests on the show too who still uh, put out CDs. Not not all. Some of them don't. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm curious, what is it like there? Is is physical media still an important part of all of it? And do you do you release these songs? as cds as well or have you ever put out vinyl or or do you just focus on doing it digitally um i right now at the moment i'm do, it's all like digipack album pieces it's like it's just cds but we are definitely thinking of branching out you know into vinyl but so right now i just we're doing it one bit at a time with yeah. the digipack to me you know it's i think it is very important um in the UK as well to have that kind of fun CD physical copy because when people see it they're like oh you know this is uh, you know a part of like an era of your life this is mm-hmm. part of your music and while we could definitely branch into other things I do want to take it one bit at a time because I as I'm always you know on this journey vinyl is important CD is important but right now it's just you know CD yeah yeah absolutely. Um, where do you record? Uh, do you, do you work with a a producer or, I mean, a lot of people now, again, we live in an era where you can do it all yourself if you want to. Uh, What's your, uh, what's your approach? What's your process in terms of recording? So my dad was a musician, so he would release all the time. Yep. He was. And so we had that, that that's originally what kind of started our music career. We had that equipment at home. Mm. And so starting with the crit we would literally just do it in our conservatory we'd set everything up and just record at home in terms of producing i have worked with producers before i'm actually good friends with them but you know the songwriting process most of the process actually when creating my songs is you know individual it's me and i do most of it at home wow well you had a great start right that's pretty cool having a dad who is is he still active musically your father Yes, he is actually. Um, but he's, you know, he's given a great deal of support to my music career as well. Like he's always kind of motivated me and he's taught me very valuable life lessons in music as well, which have definitely helped me progress and, you know, do things such as release a digipack and yeah. stuff like that. That's wonderful to have the support of your family. That's that's uh, great. And of course, you know, to come from a... Uh, it, what, what about your mom? Is she also uh, musical or... Uh, she's not as, but you know, she's always the <laughs> number one biggest fan, yeah. filming at all the gigs, all that good stuff. <laughs> That's great. That's great. No, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're very proud of you and it's great to have that foundation. I think that that, um, you know, because not everyone has that obviously. So I, I think that's, uh, that's remarkable. Um, what, what's kind of the, the future, uh, what, what's the future trajectory for you? Are, are you going to, um, Obviously, so this this single is still pretty new. Do you have another one uh, that you're planning on releasing soon, or are you still just kind of focused on 
continuing to promote WIN? Um, I'm definitely going to give WIN the summer, mm. but in September, um, I'm actually thinking of releasing a new single. Yeah. It's called Visions. I'm very, very excited for it. It's actually, it's, it's quite different from this song. It's more like uh, methodical, a lot more harmonies. It's, you know, something I've, I've been working on for actually quite a while. So I'm excited for that to come out. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we'd love to be the uh, first American radio station to play it when it's ready. If, if, uh, Absolutely. I'll give you the exclusive and everything. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. We love to do that. So uh, that's great. Are, are you playing out a lot? Do you play a lot of live shows? Yes, actually. Summer's been jet packed. I've been Good. doing festivals. I just actually finished uh, Hazelmere Fringe Festival, was playing main stage. That was so fun. Um, yeah, just doing a few London gigs, all that good stuff. Really been playing. But, you know, now I think for July and August, I'm going to. Enjoy the summer, and then later on down the line, I'm going to be doing some more record store gigs, promoting yeah. pieces of me, just on that grind. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Is is that is that uh, still a big thing there? It seems like in America, may, maybe in big cities they still do it, but it seems like in America, you know, uh, record stores. I mean, they still exist certainly, but you know the um, you know the in store uh, promotions where artists come in and play live in record stores. It seems like that's kind of a, a thing of the past uh, to, to some extent. Is that still really popular there? Oh my God, definitely. Because it kind of works like two ways. You do a performance in the record store. You're not just promoting yourself, but like people can come into the store, listen to it. I feel like record stores nowadays, people like especially teenagers, because, you know, we all want to go back to the old stuff. When we go into record stores and we hear those live performances, it like, reminds us that we are all part of a community and mm -hmm. so me doing those record store performances not only like you know it's fun to meet other people who love like music in general love promote my music but it just creates this like really beautiful culture of just promoting music listening to new genres and exploring the community i think in your video for levels um if i'm not mistaken i think there's a it looks like you're there might be a clip in there of you performing at a record store Am I am I wrong about that? I, I feel like I th there was something in the video for Levels where it, lo it looks like you're in a store. Yeah, I think I am at one point. I mean, we wanted Levels to be like this really fun, yeah. you know, article, article, gig, you know, we're on those different levels. So there probably is something in there. But I did, there were so many gigs in that video. I remember doing like the one with Crazy Lights and we just wanted that one to be really playful. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a cool it's a cool video, and I really love the song, too. That's the one that we're going to play at the end of our conversation. Great, great track. Catchy as hell. It was, after I listened to it, it was just stuck in my head for, like, hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, really? literally all the time, they're like, levels, levels, levels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. Well, um, Sophia, what should people know about how to find you online? And, and obviously, you know, uh, uh, we have we have listeners here in America who uh, I'm sure want to uh, check you out, keep up with what you're doing, get access to your music and so forth. What should people know about how to find you online? Um, so I'm literally on majority of social media platforms on Instagram. I'm Sophia.anisa.galani and on like YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, all stream platforms. Uh, I am Sophia Galani. So yeah, stay, especially the Instagram, Sophia.anisa.galani. Go on there. It'll be the most updated social media platform for any gigs coming up, any new songs, the one in September. There you go. Excellent, excellent. Hey, and uh, before we play this, uh, is there anything we should know about this song, Levels? Any, uh, any Anything special you want us to know about it? It's just, it's such a vibe. I think when I made it, it was just for fun. It was just, you know, it was, I did write it in the spring, so I was, you know, go, going into summer, everyone was excited. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you listen to it, just bop, man. It's got that vibe. I know what you mean about, you know, in, in the spring going into summer. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Sophia Galani, uh, we'll let you go and we're going to spin this, but thank you so much for, uh, for talking with us today. And yes, definitely, when the next single is ready, let's do that. We'll have you back on. We'll, uh, we'll spin the track and uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, great stuff. Love what you're doing. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This has been so lovely. All right, Sophia. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That is uh, Sophia Galani all the way from the UK Skyping in. And let's give this a listen. This is called Levels.